That one was for all the all the fans. <laughs> you get them, Jenny. Okay. Um. Yeah. Hi, say. Uh, one may brand and each one in. Um. Yuta sarugutu ni ge sabira. So hello everybody, welcome to Bukonoshima. Uh, you might have been here earlier today. I'm going to. Oh, my name is Brandon. Ufuguskuing. Um, and some people might be wondering about the Ufugusku part. That is actually the Okinawan. Um, the the old way of saying the name Oshiro. So if you have any friends or family, know anybody last name Oshiro, Oshiro. Um, yeah, before Japanization, before Jap Japan took over and made everybody speak Japanese. The name was actually Ufugu School. You know? So uh, I'll, I'll be playing a few songs for you today and talking a little bit about the language, a little bit of how I got involved. And yeah, I don't know how much time you have, but I'll try not to go too long. Okay. Um, so how many of you actually, raise your hand if you, if you knew that there, was, there is an Okinawan language. You already knew that. Yeah. Okay, most people, some people don't know, and that's that's fine. That's what we're here for. Right? We want people to to learn something. So yeah, uh, we call it Uchinaguchi. Uh, actually, across the Ryukyu Islands, there's six major uh, language groups, and all of them are endangered. Yeah, there's a lot of um, the older generation still speaks, but it's not being passed down. Um, so if you if you talk to any young people, a lot of them know almost almost zero Uchinaguchi. Um, and you know, the language is so important to our culture. Even take the word uchinanchu. Like hopefully, even if you hadn't heard that word before today, being at the festival, you probably uh, heard the word uchinanchu. And, well actually, show of hands. How many of you heard that word before, uchinanchu? Okay. Uh, so some people have not. And uchinanchu, it comes from the Okinawan language. It means uh, Okinawan person, person of Okinawa including people with roots in Okinawa. We use it as that too. Um, you know, there was, a, there was a time when I didn't, I knew the word, I knew that I was Uchinanchu, but I didn't know what it meant. And a real eye-opening experience when I was going to the University of Hawaii, uh, one of my, he's actually a manager at the library where I was working part-time. He was from Japan and, and we had a conversation and the word Uchinanchu came up because I had a, a wristband that said Uchinanchu pride. And he asked me what Uchinanchu was. And I told him it means Okinawan Okina person. <laughs> and he said, he told me, oh, there's, there's no such word. The word doesn't exist. And I was, I was blown away, right? I didn't know, I didn't know how to answer because I grew up with that word, with that identity, but I never gave thought to where that word even came from. Um, you know, here's this person from Japan who speaks Japanese. He's never heard the word Uchinanshu. He's probably thinking Okinawans are all supposed to be speaking Japanese and they are Japanese, so yeah, so that was, I think that was his perspective. Um, so, um, yeah, that was really, when I think about it now, that was really proof that the language is so important to our identity, yeah? So, because without it, then we don't even have a word to identify ourselves within our own perspective, yeah? I'll try not to talk too much. I, I wrote a lot of ideas down. Um, there's people in Okinawa who are, are trying to preserve the language too, but there's a lot that don't see the, uh, the importance of it. Um, and there's all different ideas. There's, there's one train of thought that says the language will be okay because we still have our traditional uh, music and dance. And um, I actually disagree with that because um, you know if, if we only use the traditional arts as far as a language, a tool to preserve the language, you know, that, that really restricts the audience. And um, not only that, traditional Okinawan poetry often doesn't sound like spoken Uchinaguchi. So if you try to learn how to speak from a song, you, yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't really work. Um, um, yeah. And um, yeah, just yeah. To to be transparent, you know, my Uchinaguchi is not is not perfect. It's not. It's not super good, um, but I had the fortunate opportunity to learn a lot along the year, uh, throughout the years, and I try to share with other people what I have picked up along the way. And um, you know, one thing I kind of realized is maybe by creating sort of modern-sounding music, 
that can kind of open up people's eyes and ears to the language. You know, at least at least start a conversation. At least prove to people that the language is that we have it. It exists, and it's you know it's not extinct yet. It is it is endangered, but you know, hopefully we can still do something to to save it. And that's what we're trying to do. And I do want to also emphasize that I am very rooted in Okinawan traditional Okinawan music as well. Yeah. So. Um, what what that what ends up happening is sometimes we we take um, traditional Okinawan music and we put them to um, chord progressions to make it sound um, different. <laughs> uh, just for example, um, a song like Tanchame. I don't I'm not sure if you know Tanchame. But one one cool thing about Okinawan music, especially our folk music, is that it is that it swings. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna play it on the wrong strings here, but so it sounds like tongue chame. Sorry. Yeah, so you have this this kind of swingy feel with our traditional music, but then This is Jesse Shiroma on Kahong. He, um, he was playing with, with us with Tai Pot Tai on stage and I just say uh, I dragged him over here so thanks Jesse. Some of the things that um, I like to do with, uh, yeah, with, with traditional Okinawan music. Um, again, the idea is to to try and broaden the audience. Hopefully, so my own journey, I kind of started off hearing these more Okinawan, more pop music coming out of Okinawa, and somehow that that got me interested in the traditional music, the folk music, also the classical music of the UQs. Um, so I'm not sure how that happened, but. Again, I hope I hope you know other people have that same experience. Where, um, yeah, because because we do want to hold on to our traditions as well. You know? uh, so another another thing about our our music, our folk music, um, classical music too, is based on what we call yuka, uh, which is a style of poetry. If if you were here for Keith Nakaganeku's talk earlier, he mentioned yuka, and yuka is poetry in in stanzas of four lines. And you know, with with music, what we might call modern Western music, our ears are also accustomed to patterns of four. So you can take traditional Okinawan poetry, and you can we can set them to um, other songs. If you if you took a song like um, a song like Ichubigwa, thanks. So Ichubigwa is a. If you're here for the bone dance, you'll probably hear it. I'm not sure if anybody else played it earlier today. Oh, played it five times again. So maybe you have heard it. Hopefully you heard it. So uh, a song like... Uh... <laughs> yeah, another thing about Okinawan music is very participatory. Right? So feel free to clap along.
So yeah, this for example, that's um, that's Ichibiba in its traditional form. But again, because of that magic number four, <laughs> um, one thing that we like to do is we take the words from that song, and if you know this song is called Sweet Pea, you can kind of you can put those words over this melody. Same Okinawan words that I'm saying. Ichubi, wani furiti, jachi mi mura kayuti, kayuti kayuhi kusachi na no banjo. Ichubi, wayana jichi, ashina mahadi kayuti, ababashi no munchi me. Karaya, Kayuti Ada Nayumi Tirasa, Tirasa, Shibuja, no Ashirumatiru. So Ichibi Wa is actually, it's kind of a love song, but um, Ichibi is, is a yuku, it's a berry, it's a fruit. Ichubi wani furiti, jachi mi mura kayuti sa umu ya ga chon kanashi ga umu ya ga chon kanashi ga yeah yeah umu ya ga chon kanashi ga chon. Thank you. Thank you.